Hello, Tom. Uh, can you hear me? Hang on, I can't hear you. No? Oh, I can hear you now. Wonderful. How's it going? Not bad. How you doing, man? Not bad. Done working at 1.30 on Friday. <laughs> so wise. All right, you ready yeah. to do this thing? I'm ready. Hopefully I have good answers. This week on STEM Think to Talk About, I'm talking with my good friend and college teammate, Tom Haskins, who is a geologist out in Seattle, Washington. <laughs> cool. Well, Tom, welcome to STEM Thing to Talk About. Thank um, you. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming on the show today, Tom. Um, so, Tom, could you start off by uh, letting us know, um, or could you start off by introducing yourself and describing what it is that you do? Sure. So my name is Tom Haskins, and I am a geologist, and my focus in geology is in environmental remediation, which means once uh, somebody pollutes the environment, I'm hired to come in and fix it. Try and clean it up, huh? Exactly. It's clean okay. up. Nice. So what is it that, like, what do you have to, like, what are some of the things that you do on a daily basis in order to try and remediate the environment? So a lot of, well, I guess 50% of my time is probably spent outdoors doing investigations of uh, wherever it is that was contaminated. And investigations could be uh, collecting samples, uh, mapping things out there. Uh, <laughs> uh, a, lot, a lot of data collection a variety of data um, and then in the office a lot of it is writing reports and communicating with regulatory agencies like the environmental protection agency or epa so um now like some of the uh i guess the pollutants um that you're trying to uh remediate like what are like what are some of the main causes of those pollutions? Of those so pollutions? a lot of it is, uh, you know, back in the day, the attitude was out of sight, out of mind. So companies, if they had hazardous waste or something, they would take it out the back door and throw it out onto the ground or bury it or hide it. You know, anything's cheaper than, you know, following the laws and and having those things disposed of correctly at the time anyway. And so a lot of what we do is like left over from the 50s and the 60s and the 70s where people were just negligent. Um, and now the environment's contaminated and we need to go clean it up. And then some are ongoing, you know, there's oil spills that happen, um, mining causes pollution. There's all sorts of different things. Now, so do you have to move around from like one site to another quite often? Yeah, so on a given day, I probably work on four or five different projects. Um, and so I'm always traveling around Washington. I go to Idaho for some work out there too. So I get to travel quite a bit for my work. That's, uh, I didn't realize that you got to travel quite so much. Yep. Yeah, I think cool. I spent uh, six weeks in Idaho last year. Did you? Wow. So yeah, fun. Nice. Very cool. So like, and so with that, what is, uh, like, what's one of the things that you like most about your job? Uh, definitely being outside. Yeah. That was one of the main reasons I switched to geology in the first place mm -hmm. is, uh, when I was in college, I started out as a physics major because I liked math Ooh. and I liked physics. That's what you did, right? Yeah. <laughs> physics. Yeah. Yep. Well, I wanted to be outside more. So yeah. I uh, figured out a profession or a, a degree field anyway, where I could still use math and physics, but also be outside. And so now, like I said, 50% of my time is probably spent outdoors. And that could be anywhere from like downtown Seattle to uh, super rural Idaho in the middle of nowhere with no cell service. Nice. But so, being yeah. outside is just nice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what I'm having a very difficult time with getting any work done. <laughs> yeah. I just want to go for a bike ride all the time. Yeah. Um, you mentioned a little bit about your coursework um, in college and how you started off as a physics major. 
Um, but then you switch to geology. Can you explain a little bit, like, what is it that you had to go through in order to become a geologist? Sure. So the core coursework, um, I mean, like any, any major, you sort of get a very uh, broad education on geology. So we learned anything from like fossils to the different rock types, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary, to hydrogeology, what the groundwater is doing. Like you've got a, a drinking water well or something. Rural houses have wells instead of um, um, like city sewer lines and stuff. And so you learn about groundwater. Um, and then there's just so many little facets too that you can go into. You could you could talk about petroleum geology, um, structural geology. You know what a what the Rocky Mountains look like if you were to slice them into a cross section. Yeah. Um, you know all all sorts of stuff like that. And I focus mostly on hydrogeology. I was really interested in groundwater and groundwater contamination. And what made you decide to go towards like the groundwater or hydrogeology? I've just always been fascinated by water in general. Ever since I was a little kid, I would like play on the beach and dig trenches and dump water down the trench and watch what happens. See how the tran the sand gets transported down. Yeah, I mean that's and, a huge part of what's created the landscapes that we have, right? Yeah, yeah, and so I I just always loved water, always had affinity for it. Hey, you know, good old H two O. We wouldn't be here without it. So, right. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, what about um? So, I mean, obviously, you attended SUNY Oneonta for your undergraduate, but you also had to um, do some grad school as well, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. So I got my bachelor's of science from Oneonta, and then I moved out here to Seattle, and I got my master's of science in geology still from the University of Washington. And that was a uh, one and a half year master's program where I learned um, really focused in on the geology here in Western Washington, mostly on the west side of the Cascade Range Mountains. Here. Okay. And um, what type of rocks for the most part uh, is it that you find over in that area? So, as a geologist, I really don't look at specific rocks. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hardly ever. No, good to know. Um, a lot of so the, the background of the glacial history in Washington over the last hundred thousand years or longer, the planet has warmed and cooled, and so the ice sheets up in the Arctic advanced. When it was cold, they advanced down through Canada and into the northern part of the United States in Washington, Montana, New York. We've got a lot of glacial, mm. glacial leftovers in New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when those uh, ice sheets and glaciers came down into Washington, um, they really churned up whatever was on the surface, hills, mountains. They really beat it up. And so when they receded, what was left was just um, unconsolidated sands and gravels, really. Sort of what you would uh, make your base course out of for a road, just okay. gravel. Yeah. And so a lot of times pollution, right, is pretty shallow when you're thinking about how large the earth is. It's just on the surface. Mm -hmm. And here in Washington, what's on the surface is just a lot of um, unconsolidated sands and gravels, just, just pretty loose. It's not like a rock, like you don't find a whole lot of cliffs here right. in Seattle. Fair. So sands and gravels. Sands and gravels. <laughs> cool. Hey, again. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be where we are without it, probably. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, uh, another question that we've got for you is what is um, one of the, or what are some of the biggest challenges that you find with your job? So, with my job, um, like I mentioned, we're working with uh, regulatory agencies sometimes. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the stickiest parts of the job um, so we're often hired by the company that polluted the environment in order to mm -hmm. you know, help them clean it up. And we're often working as a liaison between the company that polluted and the EPA or other, you know, the state.